I'm almost finished with just putting in grayscale colors. So I'm going to leave myself a note here. And then um, if I go back to this version in the future and want to make just a grayscale, I know that all I have to do is, is limit the amount of colors. And I think five would be reasonable since we took the time to, or I took the time to get five colors in the face. But I have various colors, um, and values in the hair. And I think it would probably be better if they were all a little bit closer. And since the, the face is the key point that we're going for, I may not put the very lightest in the hair. I may pick three values that are a little bit closer together because your eye tends to go where the highest contrast is. So we would probably want to avoid having too much contrast in the hair and the shirt. But just different things to think about if you ever want to do this in the future. But we'll move on with the color one shortly here. And then just a couple other notes for myself. But the biggest issue that I see right now is that if I go back and look at the photograph, his chin is not right. It almost looks like he has one of those double chins that's off to our left. And really, he has a chin that's more rounded right here. So in other words, I probably need to add some, some blacks here. But let me just bring up the um, original images here so we can see. Uh, there's a posterized one, and you can see what it should look like compared to what it does look like. So I think just putting a little bit here and here would probably get the job done. So I'll go up to the top, make sure everything's locked that I don't want to get onto. And if I just take the eyeballs off for the, uh, the skin, all the different skin colors here, I should be able to see down to the original image and now know what I need to do there. I think that's better. Gets more of the, the idea across. May want to play around in here even. But um, last thing we want to do before we move on to the coloring is just make sure that we have all the details taken care of here. So one thing that we probably want to do here is go ahead and right near the very bottom, create a temporary layer, and on that layer, just make a big rectangle and then color that rectangle with a very bright color. The brightest thing that you think would contrast or show through. And then we just want to go into the face area and just make sure that that color doesn't show through anywhere, which would indicate something that when we go to print it, would be screaming white showing through. It looks like I did a pretty good job here. And that's just because, you know, every time I drew a line, I made sure that if there was a color next to it, I underlapped it. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's going to work. So let's move on by Go ahead and do a file, save, to save what we have so far, a file, save as. And we'll go ahead and just like we did a uh, just black, we'll make uh, grayscale. And again, this is just for future use. And we'll go ahead and close the grayscale one, and we will open back up our one that we've been working on. Then at this point, I can go ahead and get rid of the notes that apply only to grayscale, but I probably need to leave put the whites of the eyes in since I haven't done that yet, and go ahead and get rid of that background color. Now since we're doing a portrait, obviously the most dominant color here would be the skin color. So how do we get that? Well, a couple different ways. I mean, one, we can be very stylistic and choose any color we want. There's nothing saying that I can't make him have a green face as long as I have different values of green and, and it comes across. Um, but let's at least start out more realistic. So 
I would highly suggest that as an exercise, you try to build your own color first. It's just kind of an interesting exercise, kind of an eye opener. So let's try that. And then I'll show you the second method that you can use in addition to or instead of this method. So I just made a, a big rectangle here. And one way we can choose the colors is by building a swatch. So let's just go ahead and try that. And we'll call this skin with a capital C on there for color that we're actually building color. And we can use these sliders now. So probably there's going to need to be some, some reds and yellows. Uh, in fact, reds and yellows are the dominant colors in most skin colors. Um, probably not a, a lot of, of either of them, but it all depends on uh, what you're doing. But the only problem with this method is you don't get a very big view of the color. But let's just click OK, put that color in there. You can probably see now it's probably a little too pinkish. Um, another way that we can start out here is double click inside the fill color and bring up this and then we can decide whether we want to go more towards the reds or more towards the orange or the yellows and then by clicking in here we get an idea of what color we're adding to the skin so that's kind of fun I, i'd start out somewhere in here just uh, again to, to see how what a challenge it can be picking out skin colors and kind of fun just breaking things down to saying it has to have a color it's not brown it's not you know whatever names you want to give up it comes down to to reds yellows blues so on um, now the other thing that you might want to do is go out to the net or if you had a color image to start with now go back to the color version um, in this case I'll take this image here and I'll go ahead and save it and we'll open it in the program and try sampling from it so I'm linking this document here I made a new layer called for skin tests put this in here I'll also clean my document up a little bit and put these other two in that same layer and then lock a bunch of this stuff here for now now what you can do is again create another box in fact I'll just copy this one over here but there is an eyedropper tool in here and if we double click on it you can change whether it's a point sample which means that exactly where you click is which color you get which is usually not a, a great idea with um, high resolution images or in this case it would average out uh, about a five by five area and I assume they're talking about pixels there in Photoshop they definitely are um, and then got to pick an area that we think represents the mid-tone or the local value of the skin now with older people it's harder and harder because we get like you know broken uh, veins and different things like that in our skin but uh, I'm gonna try like right there looks like a pretty good chunk of flesh way way darker than I was anticipating but let's just kind of click around till we get something something that we like so I'm gonna try this color and if I want to know what the build of that is I can double click here and there's my CMYK values and maybe I might even want to adjust it down a little bit but I'm gonna trust the image and say alright let's start there so now the fun begins um, but before we actually color let's have another little bit of fun and let's pick a color palette now here's where we get to have artistic license. I don't care what color shirt he had on or what color his eyebrows or lips actually are. Let's see if we can't build a try and true color palette. Now I have a lot of videos available under the illustrator section that, that talk about the, the color wheel and, and give you some insight of some websites to go for more information. But let's just take this color and I'm actually going to make just a couple backups just in case I 
accidentally change this, so I'm just going to option drag over here so I know I've got that. And then I'm going to take this color, I'm going to go into the color guide, I'm going to make sure that that is the set color, and then I'm going to go to this little drop down here, and I'm going to pick a color palette that I think I could have some fun with, um, you know, that would give me a good color to pick for the shirt and you may even use this for eyebrows or whatever. Um, a complimentary is a good uh, palette. You may want to pick um, something that you think is is pretty nice in here that would give you colors that you could use for for other items including uh, the lips and so on. There's actually two things that I like in here. I like the split complimentary so I could use this for a skin, this um, as a local color for a shirt, maybe this as a background. But I'm also going to want a color for his lips, and I may just come back in here, find out what these colors are later. But let's start with the split complementary. Now, I found from experience that it's easy to, to accidentally lose these colors uh, that you have set up in this color guide. So what I suggest you do is once you get your colors is click on the far left one, hold down the shift key, click on the far right one, and then go to this icon to save the, the group to your swatches. Then when you look at your swatches back in this view, you have all the different colors in there. So now the only tedious part about this is we're going to have to write down some of the names of these colors or their build and then change them in the global color panel. So if we double click on them, it'll pop this open here and then we can just write these down and then swap out the global colors. I just write this down as being skin number one, the central color, and I say, okay, that's 339.39. That's close enough. Then I go into my, back into this mode where I had things labeled in here. And I go to skin number one. Now remember, you're starting to make some pretty major changes here. So it might not be a bad idea just to go file, save, file, save as, and maybe call this color try one. It's free to save files, and I highly suggest it because if you really mess something up, you can always go back. So we're going to find skin. Uh, number three would be the middle color, and we'll just double click on right here to open this up, and we'll punch in those numbers that we had, which were 3, 39, 39, and 0, and click OK, and there we go. There's already one color supplied. Now, we'll go back to this mode. And we'll figure out, okay, since we use this as our middle color, we need two that are lighter and two that are darker. So I probably don't want to go all the way here because that's actually black. So that makes no sense. But I can try this or this as my darkest color. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. You can always go back and, and change your mind. That's the beauty of the global colors. So I'll start writing these numbers down, punch all those in for the skin, and show you what I came up with. So there's the five skin tones put in. Not sure if I like it yet, um, but it's too early to tell. So I may as well continue on, do the, the shirt and uh, the lips, and then see where we're at from there. So there's a shirt color put in, and as I mentioned earlier, what I wanted to do was steal that other color for the lips from the analogous color palette. Now generally you don't mix two color palettes because that defeats the purpose of using a tried and true color palette. But analogous color palettes are kind of the, the one area where you, you, know, you can have an analogous color palette with a complement or you know, something like that. Now I may not like this, but you can tell there's no arguing that these colors work nicely together because they're part of a... Um, a tried and true color palette. So to get back to uh, being able to search out that other color, we go back into the color guide, but notice it's set at the last color we use. So that's where you have to be really careful and make sure you get it set back to your beginning color. 
um, which in our case was this orange. So if I now grab the eyedropper tool, 